In 2011, there was a very specific job that needed to be done. Notch, the creator of what was soon to become the single most successful independent development project of all time, needed to find a way to end his little game. So he put forward this tweet. Are you a talented writer? Famous is a plus who wants to write a silly, over-the-top, out-of-nowhere text for when you win Minecraft? Upon seeing this tweet, a fan of Minecraft put forth the name of a writer, Julian Goff. Julian was fairly accomplished at the time, but considering that 99% of you probably didn't recognize his name just now, it's fair to say that he was a bit more obscure back in 2011. In Julian's own words, his name being put in the running was surprising, but not entirely unreasonable. What was surprising, however, was the fact that Julian had serendipitously met Notch two years prior. So later that night, he received a personal email from Notch, asking if he'd like to write the ending to Minecraft. This tweet, this tiny request, made on a night like any other, ended up leading Julian down a decade-long rabbit hole of appreciation, frustration, conflict, hurt, and fixation, which he recently discussed fully in a post on his Substack account. The information described here is taken from said post, which was written on December 6th, 2022. Link in the description. I highly suggest the read. So upon receiving this email, Julian wasn't so sure that he was the right man for the job. He felt like his writing was too unusual for what Notch was asking. So he linked him a short story that he had written called The Eye Hole. Notch loved it and assured Julian that he was the perfect person for the job. So Julian got to playing Minecraft with his daughter. He tried his best to understand the game and its philosophical implications. He asked Notch if there were any guidelines he needed to follow. And Notch said no, not really. The game just needed an ending and he wanted it to feel special. Otherwise, Julian had full creative freedom. He asked Notch a few technical questions before he really got to writing. Can the player's name be inserted anywhere in the writing? Yes. Can some text look encrypted and jumbled? Yes. And with those simple clarifications, he was off. And this is where things start to get a bit interesting. Julian describes the experience of writing Minecraft's ending as unique in a few key ways. For one, he initially wrote it by hand, in cursive, and he often felt as though the words were essentially falling out of him faster than he could actually think. He says that he truly felt as if the voice of the universe wanted to address people directly, and it was speaking through him in this opportunity to write the ending of this game, which he admits is a somewhat controversial and difficult to believe idea, but when pressed, it's authentically how he feels. So after a proofread and a few minor edits, Julian sent it to Notch. And Notch loved it, this interesting little poem that the universe had written. He loved every word, and he didn't ask for a single change, but this is only one side of the story, because as this discussion was going on with Notch, Julian was talking to someone else at Mojang, the CEO at the time, Carl Manna. Notch had asked Julian to reach out to Carl to talk about getting paid. So while this very enriching creative discussion was happening with Notch, the question of money was being discussed with Carl. Now, Julian owns the fact that, in hindsight, he mishandled this initial series of emails with Carl. In his own words, I was so thoroughly in art mode, making art with Marcus, that I didn't change gear when talking to Carl. 
I felt we were all friends, making art, and that the point of the conversation with Carl was to, as friends, work out what was fair. Not negotiate ruthlessly, work out what was fair. And throughout his retelling of this story, Julian stresses the fact that there's no bad guy in the situation. Everyone was just doing their job. Notch was around to talk about art, and Carl was there to talk about business. And Julian admits that he should have had his agent talk to Carl instead of trying to do it himself, but he was still viewing the entire exchange as an informal transaction, as there were less than five people working for Mo Yang at the time. To quote Julian again, There I was, talking to Carl, thinking I was talking to an art friend. As a result, I wasn't negotiating like a proper grown-up with an agent. I was rambling along in email after email, trying to work out what was fair, trying to find some common ground, which did not in fact exist, because we were doing completely different things, because Carl wasn't an artist. He was a guy who had studied corporate finance at California State Fullerton. He had a master's degree in business and administration, and he had no idea why I was rambling on like this. And so, as my emails got longer and longer, his emails got shorter and shorter, as he got more and more annoyed with me. And eventually, Carl got so annoyed that he threatened to pull the plug on Julian's ending for Minecraft. He set a price of 20,000 euros to compensate Julian and informed him that he would later receive a contract from Mo Yang, working out the nitty-gritty of the copyright. It was that deal, take it or leave it. In desperate need of money, Julian accepted and proceeded to pay off his debts, feed his family, and otherwise move on with his life. But in the time between that last email with Carl and Julian actually receiving the contract in question, Minecraft was released and had been out for about a month. Of course, it was nothing short of an international sensation at the time. So Julian felt pretty frustrated at this point because he was unhappy with how his correspondence with Carl had gone and in taking the money up front, he had locked himself into a contract that hadn't even been written yet. Julian was so flummoxed and exhausted by the ordeal that he didn't sign the contract when he received it. In fact, he didn't even read it, which is something he was embarrassed to admit in his post, considering the importance that it held at the time. And after this, Julian let the idea of renegotiations slip. He was busy writing, and Mo Yang was busy being the runaway success that it was. So he never signed the contract, and it was never brought up again. Julian still felt an underlying loyalty to Notch. The first time you beat Minecraft, the ending credits are unskippable and very difficult to speed up. Notch wanted to make sure that people read Julian's writing. It was important to both of them that people saw it, and millions were exposed to it. So while he still felt hurt that he hadn't received any of the cash gifts that Notch seemed to regularly bestow upon the people who made Minecraft, he could never bring himself to pursue more money from Notch or Mo Yang. As time went on, as a textbook starving artist, Julian continued to struggle financially. Money ebbed and flowed as work did. In his initial email thread with Carl, he was promised exposure for his writing through Minecraft. And this hadn't been honored. Most players assumed that Notch had written the ending text. At one point, Julian even asked Notch to publicly mention some of his other writing, but Notch didn't want to, and Julian felt embarrassed for even asking. And this is where things get really interesting. So a few years passed, and 2014 rolls around. Mo Yang was setting up to be bought by Microsoft, and Carl, out of the blue, sent Julian another email. This one claimed that they were just doing a little housekeeping and they noticed that Julian never signed the original contract. 
So Carl attached another copy to the email and casually asked Julian to sign it. But this time, Julian took the time to read it. And it was not a very pleasant contract. It essentially stated that upon signing it, Julian would be relinquishing all rights to use, alter, or even claim the writing at the end of Minecraft as his own. It even included an NDA, which would have prevented Julian from sharing his story up to this point. So needless to say, he didn't sign it. And this decision stood to complicate and postpone the $2 billion offer that Microsoft had put forward for Mojang. And the kicker was that Carl, in this email, hadn't even mentioned the Microsoft deal. As one of only a few of Mojang's original shareholders, Carl ended up gaining $225 million from the deal with Microsoft. And to put it kindly, he was attempting to trick Julian into signing away the little piece of Minecraft that he actually owned with a casually worded email. So Julian held firm on his refusal to sign the contract, especially in light of the Microsoft deal. This naturally upset Carl and Notch quite a bit, but not long after Julian made his position clear, he received another email from Carl, stating that there was no renegotiation necessary. Mojang and Microsoft's lawyers had come to an agreement that would allow the deal to move forward without Julian resolving his contract. Then they all made a bazillion dollars, and Julian never heard from them again. And at this point in the story, it's important to clarify that Julian is very happy with the way that his life has shaken out, and while money has always been a bit evasive to him, he is fairly certain that the financial stability that any fair deal with Mojang would have offered him also would have taken his life down a very different path. So it's at this point that I would highly encourage you to go and read Julian's post in the description regarding this whole ordeal. There's a lot more that Julian wanted to share on this, but it's all deeply personal and it actually stems from an epiphany he had while taking some magic mushrooms on a nature retreat in late 2021. So please, if you're curious, go check it out. But the bottom line is that Julian is still, to this day, the sole copyright holder of the end poem. He never signed the original contract, which means he never legally consented to having his writing used in the way that it was by Mojang, and now Microsoft. But rather than taking legal action against Microsoft, he's decided instead to do quite the opposite. He put the poem into the public domain. It's now free to read, distribute, print out, sell on t-shirts, use on websites, quote, rewrite, whatever. And in celebration of this act of goodwill between artists, I will be uploading a reading of the Minecraft end poem following this video, so please stay tuned for that if you'd like to hear it. So here's the thing. Art is beautiful. It is an act of love to a world that is so frequently devoid of wonder. And it's only natural that art be ascribed monetary value. But what is truly baffling is the ever-growing void between those who make art and those who control art. Systems of value around fine art are cruelly arbitrary leading to the endlessly disorienting prices that utterly perplex the general public. 
And of course, we sometimes feel smothered by massive corporations that seek to endlessly capitalize on the characters and stories that occupy the most sacred corners of our hearts. And so it is Julian's sincere wish for all of his writing to be free. And while that isn't entirely possible, some of it is tied up in legal contracts, he does his best to honor this wish. Julian views art as a gift to the world, and he has an endless amount of gratitude to the fact that the Minecraft end poem has been received, taken in, by so many people. He offers a free subscription to his Substack account, which includes all of the writing that he can legally share there. But he also reluctantly admits that a person who can give gifts but refuses to receive them is something of a hypocrite. So, very modestly, as a footnote on his very long and interesting story about his contribution to Minecraft, he does cite a few ways that you can support him. There are some paid tiers to his Substack account, or if you'd rather just buy him a cup of coffee, he has a few ways that you can give him a one-time donation. And please, please, don't use this video as a replacement for his post. If you want to, please go read it. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, a close friend of mine sent me Julian's post while I was doing research for an entirely separate video on Minecraft. So. That's on the horizon as well. Please stay tuned for that. And to wrap up, if I may, I would just like to point out the moral of the story, if there is one, as Julian put it. Making art is hard, and monetizing art is even harder. So it is best, if you can, to try to draw direct connections with the artists that you love. That doesn't have to mean money, that can mean community. But if it does mean money, try to find a way to put it directly in the pocket of the person that is inspiring you. And with that, I think that's all I've got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this little sliver of Minecraft's history. And I hope you enjoyed the way that I told it. Until next time, stay tuned.